LT. L minus one minute. Auto sequence start. Copy auto sequence start. Electrical PDUs and ODMs enabled. Vehicle fully armed. Copy electrical one. T minus 30 seconds. Mark. Go Minotaur C, go Planet. Stage 0 TV is squibbed. T minus 10 seconds. Mark. L minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Liftoff of Minotaur C carrying the Skysat and Dove satellites for planet. Attitude is nominal. Attitude remains nominal as the Castor 120 Stage 0 motor propels the 104 foot tall Minotaur C vehicle away from Vandenberg Air Force Base. Stage 0 motor pressure is nominal. Attitude remains nominal. Stage 0 TVA is performing nominally to control the flight of the vehicle. Vehicle is past max Q. Attitude remains nominal. Now approximately 50 seconds into the Minotaur C mission for planet to place six Skysat and four Dove spacecraft into a sun-synchronous orbit. Attitude remains nominal, coming up on Stage 1 TVA pressurization. Stage 1 TVA has been pressurized. Stage 0 has burned out. Stage 0 separation. Stage 1 has ignited and attitude is nominal. Stage 1 TVA is nominal and controlling the flight of the vehicle. Power buses remain strong at 100 seconds into the mission. Now two minutes into the Minotaur C mission for planet. Attitude remains nominal as the vehicle altitude passes 100 kilometers. And we have lost telemetry in the center. We have negative telemetry in the center. STM. Oh, yes, we still have lock on range data. Uh, yes, so we have can work. And ROC, ROC, this is vehicle on countdown one. Uh, we have negative telemetry in the center here at building 836. Was just hoping you could confirm the track of the vehicle via radar. And this, is this is vehicle on countdown one. We have recovered telemetry in the center. We are now 230 seconds into the flight. Attitude remains nominal and we're in stage two burn. 
stage two burnout. Vehicle energy state is good. Fairing has separated. I repeat, the fairing is confirmed to have separated and fully deployed. Vehicle is now in a prolonged coast phase as the flight software of the Minotaur C vehicle waits for the vehicle altitude to reach our orbit injection point of approximately 500 kilometers. And uh, once again, we have negative telemetry in the center. Okay, this is vehicle on countdown one. We have active telemetry in the center once again. Now over 300 seconds into the mission, all systems are operating nominally. This is Minotaur Mission Control. We have had uh, second stage motor separation. The rocket stack has now entered a four minute coast phase. Liftoff was at 2.37 p.m. Pacific time. I'm joined now by Chester Gilmore, Vice President of Manufacturing for Planet. Um, how about that launch? Uh, that was amazing. Yeah, great. Well, thanks for being here. Um, can you tell me a little bit about how the SkySats are built and who the major players are that are involved? Yes, uh, absolutely. The SkySats are built with a whole lot of awesome. Uh, the major players would be uh, obviously the you know the tremendous efforts from the engineering team at the former formerly at Terabella and uh, Skybox team who actually engineered the bulk of uh, the bulk of the work, and then the payloads are built by L3, and the propulsion modules are provided by ECAPS, and it's actually very interesting. It's a green propellant system on board these SkySats, and the uh, final assembly and test uh, integration and launch campaign is supported by SSL. Okay, great. So can you tell us what kind of testing the SkySats undergo prior to launch? Oh, yeah, we do all the testing. <laughs> All the testing. All the testing. Uh, so I understand you have four Dove CubeSats on this uh, this launch. So how do the two satellite fleets complement each other? Yes, absolutely. If you think about uh, the real plan for the for the product in the future, what Planet is building is really uh, information about the changing planet. So we think of this like a queryable Earth, where you can answer. You can go to our platform to uh, ask questions about the planet and find find answers. If you think about the different classes of spacecraft. Uh, they would operate much like the human eye operates. So if you think about the human eye when it's looking at a wide field, uh, you have your peripheral vision, which are the Dove satellites providing a base layer of about three to five meters resolution. And then when you see something of interest, you would turn your head and your iris would zoom in and focus. And that would be what the sky sets would do. Okay. So the, the, the theory is to operate them as a homo homogeneous uh, network of spacecraft. Okay, that's really interesting. Yeah. Um, so I understand you've launched many times in the past. So what yes. makes this specific launch so unique? Well, this is uh, this has been a lot of fun. In the past, we've always been secondary, which means we're somewhere in the trunk of the rocket, uh, and not not paid much attention. And this has been our first dedicated uh, rocket launch, and it's actually our first time we've been involved in mission control and the launch operations. So it's been a tremendous amount of fun. Well, that's great. Glad we can provide that opportunity for you. Um, so tell us a little bit about the art that's on the rocket fairing. Ah, so the art on the rocket fairing was provided by our artist in residence, Forrest Stern, and it depicts several several concepts. The first is an image of a dove, which represents the planet, the dove class spacecraft. And then uh, in addition to that, there's an image of a macaw parrot, which is meant to uh, illustrate the uh, Skysats, a much larger macaw parrot. So, so all of the spacecraft that we've launched to date, including the doves, have all actually had art etched onto the side panels of the satellite. So art's something that's very important to us at Planet, and we hope to hope to continue. That's great. Uh, so can you tell me, <coughs> excuse me, how Planet's customers use your imagery? Ah, absolutely. So we have a very, very wide customer base. Uh, there's the traditional uh, consumers of, of pixels or satellite imagery, which would be agricultural resettlers or the government. And then we have a newer class 
of uh, a newer class of customers who are more interested in insights that they can provide out of the out of the data. So they're not they're not taking the geo tips or taking the raw pixels, but they're looking for answers. And those might be hedge funds, uh, insurance companies, uh, people who are who are utilizing our platform to develop applications to do uh, automated uh, road detection. So a good use case of that would be after a, a disaster is struck, first responders could use a platform to figure out okay where are there actually roads still, so we know where to where to send. Aid. Oh, that's really great. Thanks mm -hmm. Thanks so much for being with us ah, here today. Absolutely. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Looking forward to deployment. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Attitude remains nominal during stage three burn, and it appears that we have gone over the radio horizon and lost telemetry for the last time on the mission. And this is vehicle on the countdown net. Uh, the data that we're seeing now in the center is a simulation of the, uh, the predicted activities of the vehicle. Uh, so although the vehicle is over the horizon and we have no telemetry coverage, this graphic will allow us to uh, continue to watch the expected events as they unfold. Vehicle at this time would be in orbit. Uh, and uh, preparing for uh, deployment of the six SkySat spacecraft. We are about two minutes from the main event, the deployment of the SkySat satellites. With me again is Trina Patterson. So Trina, where are we? Uh, give us a little update on where we are. So the vehicle has actually traveled over the horizon. So what you are seeing now is simulation. So if you remember from the animation earlier in the show, prior to launch, the first four satellites will deploy about 20 seconds from each other. And again, these are the planet SkySat satellites. And then the vehicle will make that 90 degree turn and release that payload adapter. And that just gets it away from the orbit of the satellite so there's no collision. And once that's been released away, the vehicle will turn back. And this happens about a minute later. And then those last two SkySat satellites are deployed. Approximately just a little over a minute, the two Dove satellites are deployed, followed by the, followed by those last two. So in this video, these Dove CubeSats look pretty small. So about how big are they? They're actually the size of a loaf of bread. They weigh nine pounds, so they're fairly small. It's amazing what miniaturization of satellites has done to the technology. So the, the maneuver that the vehicle does to, to deploy the satellites, is this common on most launches? It is common when you're carrying multiple spacecraft like this. So we're able to, to have those dual levels to be able to support that. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, how do you uh, turn the vehicle like that? So we use very small thrusters to make those precise turns. If you notice, those turns are like in a minute and a half, so it's very important we get it into the right orbit. We also use those thrusters to back the vehicle away when we're de done deploying all the satellites. Okay, thanks, Trina. Um, let's listen in as Steve Hollow goes through the planned calls of the satellite deployment. We're now approximately 20 seconds away from the expected deployment of the first SkySat spacecraft. First SkySat spacecraft would be deployed this time. Following spacecraft are all on 20 second intervals.
Expected deployment of SkySat SS-12. Expected deployment of SkySat SS-11. Expected deployment of SkySat SS-10. Following deployment of the first four space. So, vessels. Sean, at this point in the mission, this is where we turn that vehicle. You can see those little thrusters, too, as it's moving. Again, this is a simulated of what we are um, projected to happen right now. And so we'll turn that, release that bulkhead. You'll hear the launch conductor call it the D-path. They turn it away from the orbit of the satellites, and then we'll turn it back. Again, this is to avoid any collision with the satellites in their orbit. Thanks, Trina. Let's listen in to Steve Hollow as he makes those calls. It's the expected deployment of the forward bulkhead. And with that deployment, the vehicle will return to the velocity vector to deploy the final two SkySats. So we have about a minute and a half where we will rotate the vehicle back into that alignment of orbit to release the final two SkySat satellites. Now, Sean, this is a real exciting part of the mission. When we're deploying those satellites, we know we're putting them into the orbits, and they're going to be operational for the planet. Yeah, that really is exciting. Thanks, Trina. Let's listen in to mission control as we await those last two satellite deployments. and now approximately 20 seconds away from the deployment of the fifth SkySat spacecraft. Expected deployment of SkySat SS-9. Expected deployment of SkySat SS-8. That's all six spacecraft expected to have been deployed. The vehicle is now reoriented, reorienting itself in preparation for uh, deployment of the uh, first of two, excuse me, the first of four Dove spacecraft. As you heard, the six SkySat satellites are now in orbit, and we await the deployment of the four Dove CubeSats. So, Trina, is it common to launch this many satellites on one rocket? It is, Sean, to actually launch multiple payloads. In fact, on one of our Minotaur 4 rockets, we launched 20 satellites. And I just learned this week that Planet has launched 88 Dove satellites in one mission. One mission. One mission. So if they've launched 88 in one mission, how many uh, do they have total? So they have manufactured 300 of them. They've launched 284. So today's mission will actually have four more to add to what they call the flock. Wow, that, that's a lot. <laughs> so let's listen in to the, uh, to the call of the Dove deployment. Expected deployment of Doves 1 and 3. Vehicle is reorienting again for the deployment of Doves 2 and 4. So the first two Dove satellites have deployed. The last two will be in orbit in about a minute and a half. 
Now these satellites, if you heard from Chester, they image the Earth constantly. The Dove satellites can go to about three meter, meters pixels, so basically the size of a car. It really complements the SkySat, which can go a lot higher resolution. So they get really good imaging out of these spacecrafts we're launching today. Thanks, Trina. Let's listen in uh, as we do the deployment of the final two Dove sets. Approximately 20 seconds until the deployment of the Doves 2 and 4. Expected deployment of Doves 2 and 4. This would conclude the Minotaur C mission for planet to place six SkySat spacecraft and four doves in a sun synchronous orbit. First contact of the SkySat spacecraft is expected at approximately 1300 UTC or about an hour from this point forward, so stations shall remain on console until that time. And there you have it, the completion of the Minotaur C launch of the Planet SkySats and Dove Earth Imaging Satellites. A special thank you to Chester Gilmore from Planet for being here, and Colonel Huff and Captain Hayden from the 30th Space Wing for joining us. And of course, a special thank you to you, Trina, for taking the time to explain the rocket and for being here with us today. And thank you, Sean, for being here. It's been a great launch and a great way to watch it with you. So I want to also give a special thanks to the incredible team here at Vandenberg Air Force Base for their support of this mission and to our Planet customer for giving us the opportunity to launch their vehicle to their their orbits today. And a very special thanks to all of the Orbital ATK employees whose dedication ensures mission success. In fact, Sean, this team, a lot of them will be traveling to NASA Wallops Flight Facility next week to launch our Antares rocket and Cygnus spacecraft carrying cargo for NASA. So it's a busy, busy time for launch vehicles. It's a very busy time for us. And that launch is going to be broadcast on NASA TV, correct? It is. It will be on NASA TV on November 11th. Okay, that's great. Thanks so much. Thank you. So for updates on all of our upcoming missions, um, please follow us on our website at orbitalatk.com or on Twitter at orbitalatk. We'll leave you with another look at liftoff of the Minotaur C rocket from Slick 576E here at Vandenberg Air Force Base, California. Thanks for watching. L minus 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Liftoff of Minotaur C carrying the SkySat and Dove satellites for Planet. Attitude is nominal. Attitude remains nominal as the Castor 120 Stage Zero motor propels the 104 foot tall Minotaur C vehicle away from Vandenberg Air Force Base. Stage zero motor pressure is nominal. Attitude remains nominal.